we don't have time to go into that. So this is the trace analyzer and collector performance analysis picture of LS Dyna uh, that motivates to go from a pure MPI program here on 32 nodes with eight by eight cores each and you see broadcasts and the, the MPI communication kind of stacks out to lesser MPI and more open MP in it. So this is the hybrid model which has much more time on compute and lesser time on those functions. There's just lesser MPI uh, processes in between. Oh, we are doing time yes. Just move on to a couple of benchmarks here. So a claim a couple of minutes ago was Intel MPI is darn fast. <coughs> Here's the proof. This is running uh, Westmere's with InfiniBand and QDR adapters using the Composer XE, so Compilers 12, and the Intel MPI benchmarks, which is this, uh, a piece of source code that does sends and receives, broadcasts, produces, so all those tests. Uh, produces results for small, medium, and large messages. And here's aggregated numbers that build an average on like point-to-point -point communication and collectives and all of that. Geomean is like an average technology that spec MPI uses. You can debate that. However, it leads to you can represent with a single value of like how the communication network of a machine do, is doing with this MPI. Uh, we would set a level to where open MPI in version 1.5 is. So all those application runs uh, with open MPI would be the yellow bar here. And that's our relative one. And compare any other run to just open MPI here. And the dark blue is Intel MPI 4. Uh, the red one is platform MPI. The gray one is Mbappage, which comes with uh, InfiniBand parts, and that's the generic MPI CH213. Uh, those just run out of the box. Um, this is on a dual socket system with core, with four cores each. This is how it looks on a system with six cores each. Kind of the same picture. So <coughs> Intel MPI is, is doing pretty well. Actually, it understands multiple protocols for MPI messages. It would use shared memory or cache lines for data transport between cores or between sockets and InfiniBand between uh, uh, nodes in the machine. While this was both Linux, uh, this is how it compares to the current uh, Microsoft MPI that comes with uh, uh, HPC server. Um, Windows HPC server MPI bases on MPI CH2 with a couple of optimizations and integration into the uh, uh, Windows environment. Uh, this is defining the, the default configuration of the system, which is here the one, and that's the red bars. Blue would be if you install Intel MPI on the very same system, we compile and we run. Um, with the given uh, default parameters to that. Now, what about tuning? This auto-tuning facility where you have uh, a system out of the box and then run a, a benchmark that determines what is the best packet size and what's the best algorithm for your switch, it can make an improvement. And here is uh, just an example on a machine with 32 nodes, two sockets, six cores each, <coughs> run fluent. And this is HP MPI, so platform MPI out of the box. This is Intel MPI 4 out of the box, which is slightly slower, same order of magnitude. Now, between here and there, the only thing that happened was invoke that command, which is called MPI tune, let it run for a while. <coughs> I think on 32 nodes it would run probably three or four hours. But that's 
that tuning process is the thing you do one time at the beginning of the lifetime of the system. So once you establish a configuration and decide to go with it, you determine the best configuration par uh, parameters for that. And that MPI tune run would uh, change uh, or would write a different configuration file for MPI and uh, replace the default values for uh, some infiniband uh, parameters <coughs> for collectives like all gather, all to all, and all reduce. Select a certain algorithm here for certain uh, message sizes. So that's the new values. And generate a configuration file with just six lines and running the same fluent binary then again on the same machine, start to end, uh, got an approved network performance then through that MPI <coughs> leading to a, a faster turnaround time and to a higher solver rating. What happens if you tune the HP MPI? Does that go up above? I mean, you've got Intel getting better as it goes across. Um, HP MPI, now platform MPI, doesn't have any automatic tuning. It okay. got parameters. So you, you, so you can start thinking about the parameters, but there is no automatic way of doing that. Okay. While MPI tune is just, well, an extra command for you to invoke, yeah. create a configuration free. file, and run it again. It's like profile guided compiling, so yeah. to say, or profile-guided optimization to the MPI runtime. So it's the fact that it's, it's not just Intel MPI is faster, it has a usability function yeah. to mean that you will actually get access to that speed. You could perhaps do it on the, on the HP one if you had enough skill, but if you're purely manual process. Um, that would be speculation now. Yes. I cannot say yo, no or yes. Yeah, really hope perhaps. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so instead of going into core arrays here, which work nicely with trace analyzer and collector, let me bring up uh, the trace analyzer with the program we had mentioned earlier. So this is a look at uh, the Earth soil simulation finite element program in a hybrid way. Uh, looking at the trace file, and I believe this is like 100 megabyte or so, it represents a half minute run, and you would see there had been some things, uh, some subroutines or some regions in that program instrumented already, and the first thing you see is like an overview over the whole program run. 100% of the time is split into 6.5% MPI, that's the red one on the, the top. Uh, a lot of uh, computation in between that goes through different phases, like yellow is preconditioning, there's the matrix multiplication, which is the pure, pure blue uh, solving part, and we have instrumented in a way uh, that the OpenMP runtime actually tells when it's waiting. Um, all instrumentation that is done by default on Trace Analyzer and Collector would only actually tell you its MPI and which call it is, and everything else falls into main. Uh, that can gradually be enhanced. One can use a compiler option to uh, uh, mark every user function and user subroutine. One can use binary instrumentation, if the symbols are still there, to put hooks at an existing binary without relinking. Um, it depends on the level of detail you want to, to look at. The really unique thing here is uh, you can use the tracing with fully and aggressively optimized code. Uh, so. Anything between the MPI calls, for instance, can be swapped around, vectorized, and uh, loop unrolled or so, uh, or labels gone. Uh, and with that, the overhead of instrumentation to the runtime is in the range of one to two percent. So 
not much. Performance analysis on MPI programs is really giving you a picture on how the program is, is, is running. Still, introducing a few calls uh, with trace data is very lightweight. Uh, only as you get into uh, like every subroutine with a full name, um, you probably get into tens of percents that, that, that would be added. The worst thing about that is once you, you uh, go to all the user subroutines, uh, it, it means you have to, to have compiler switches like uh, minus G or so, or preserve symbols, and that typically decreases optimization. So while beforehand you were doing full aggressive optimization, if you want to have all the symbols preserved, or program counter locations, line numbers, all of that, that <laughs> Uh, reduces the, the natural optimization of the code. So what we learn here is there is like a potential in, in, in parallel overhead here in MPI and in the OpenMP overhead. The OpenMP waiting time is like 20% of the time. MPI is about 6% of the time used. Let's look at an event timeline. And see how that looks. So there is a number of colorful things here, and if we scroll down to the very bottom, we see every colorful line in this event timeline has a little annotation to begin with. So this is P31, T0, T1, T2, T3. So we are looking at an MPI program with 32 processes, and the first number represents the rank. And every process has been using four threads, <coughs> that's T0 to T3. Um, and that makes like 128 instances, or 128 threads to look at. There is uh, aggregation and filtering of all parts of the program that could be used to, to look at. Like it would list all threads, all processes, and within the processes, what threads there are, or all nodes. So if I selected all processes and hit apply, it would just uh, combine all the four threads into a single process line. So I can look to how that program flow is, and in a bit we look at communication statistics, so how do processes and threads interact if I would select all nodes. So let's do that. Um, and within a node we would have multiple processes. All of a sudden, all the communication between uh, uh, nodes becomes network traffic and all communication within those lines is just communication that happens not over the network but within nodes. So uh, with, with pre-settings, pre-definitions to look at, for aggregation like this, you can pretty much figure out what's the data volume that's going over InfiniBand and how far is that from saturating your network, for instance. Let's go back to this look at uh, all processes and all threads, and let's zoom a little into what's happening over time here. So there's a number of iterations going, and each iteration like, looks pretty much like the next or other. That's, I don't have any favor here. Let's do that. So what it's doing here obviously is every node is computing in parallel, goes into the solver, and then has a... I'm not sure the word obvious is quite fair in that. Hmm? I'm not sure the word obvious is quite fair in that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I have been using that before. So, yeah, let me try to go to the, through the elements. So every line is a thread. Every color is a, a section of the code. Uh, the red colors would mean MPI calls, and the others are application. <coughs> and uh, the, the lines that go here, let's zoom into that region, they would represent data transfer. <coughs> so at this point in time, data is going from thread zero of that process 
uh, to thread zero of that process. And if you look to it more closely, you will find um, only thread zeros are communicating with each other. So the person that has been uh, creating this program was very careful with his open MP MPI mix. He did only issue MPI calls uh, that were not in parallel regions. 